Digital. So what are we here to discuss this evening? We're going to be helping you understand more about what business credit is all about. You know, several people, uh, you know, fail to understand what business credit is about. And we're going to be able to make sure we give you that information. We're also going to talk about the differences between business credit and also personal credit. We're going to talk about the benefits of business credit. It's not just something static and something that, you know, is great to know about. But what are the benefits of having a business credit versus just uh, having personal credit. Also, the 10 mandatory items to get business credit approval. See, Brit, business credit is something you definitely want, and we're going to tell you why here shortly. But there are 10 mandatory items that you need to make sure you can get approved uh, for business credit. We're talking about credit where you can go out here and get things not attached to your Social Security number with a personal guarantee, but credit that's based off of just the strength of your EIN, okay? That's your employer identification number, if you didn't know. We're gonna be talking about the exact steps and tiers of credit to apply for and when. That's also very critical as well, so you wanna make sure that you stay tuned until the end, and we're also gonna be talking about how to get started right away with building your business credit and how you can get money starting this week. Well, who am I and what makes me qualified to talk about this subject? Uh, personally, I've been an entrepreneur uh, since 2001. Now, Nove wasn't started in 2001. Nove was started in 2014, uh, but I've been blessed and fortunate prior to 2014 to run some successful companies. In fact, I uh, became a multi-million dollar producer by the age of 25 years old. And that's after getting started on my entrepreneurship journey at the age of 20. So within five years, I was able to learn a few things and be blessed to be around some great people, mentored and led by some great people, and also have some great people to be a part of my business organizations uh, to help me catapult to the point of millionaire status and, and even didn't finish school, college uh, in my 20s. In fact, my early 30s, I actually went back to college after retiring from college in my early 20s uh, to actually get an industrial engineering degree. And just a few years ago, actually just a few months ago, actually early this year, I uh, went back and I actually graduated uh, with an MBA, a 4.0 GPA and one of the nation's top uh, MBA programs. So something I was very proud of, but also positioned us as a company to be much stronger, uh, you know, and to have, uh, you know, much more vision when it comes to, you know, the right, the proper things to do to succeed and to be able to share that information with other businesses as well. Along the way, uh, some major recognition in 2016, I was voted the top 10% of direct selling the CEOs out of over 500 and 50 CEOs, uh, and since 2001, been able to build four multi-million dollar companies, uh, featured in Who's Who in Black Atlanta for over the past decade, and as I was saying earlier, selected uh, to be on the leadership council with the National Small Business Association that's right here out of Washington, D.C. Nove is a multi-million dollar debt-free nationwide company. Uh, you know, and when it comes to the consumer credit industry, you've actually helped delete over one million negative items from credit reports uh, of consumers who've gotten started with our service since inception. So that's something that we were really, really excited about. Our whole goal is to educate and service millions to initiate lifestyle change in our communities. And the bottom line is if we want to be able to change what we have, we have to change who we are. So the whole goal with Nove is to be able to inspire people uh, to have more out of life, to educate them on, on ways to get there and to provide opportunities to make that happen. And that's something that we're super excited to be able to share with you tonight is a an opportunity for you to be able to position yourself in your business, uh, you know, for unlimited uh, amounts of success that's about to come. And that's something that you got to get excited about. You know, tonight I'm not here to preach to you. Tonight I'm not here to you know, just try to motivate you. But I do believe that this information will inspire you to believe that you can win like you should be winning right now. There are other companies out there that are, that are winning. There are other businesses that are winning. And if they can win, guess what? You can too. But you got to figure out how to play the game. You know, that old cliche, don't hate the player, hate the game. And I don't necessarily agree with that, especially when it comes to business. You know, don't don't hate the player, but seek to understand and learn the game so you can be able to master it. And what we're going to be talking about tonight is just a few parts, a few principles, uh, and, and really some things 
um, you know, that weren't made up, but it's just really the rules of the game, things that you learn. And if you follow, you'll master it and you'll be able to be out here competing with the big boys uh, and becoming on the forefront uh, of your industry in terms of those who are winning. Well, what is business credit? Let's go ahead and kick this thing off. Business credit is credit that is obtained in a business name, not your name. OK, not somebody who co-signs name, but your business name. With business credit, the business builds its own credit profile and credit score for its EIN. Now, that's something for you to understand see, because most people, believe it or not, didn't know that their business could have its own credit profile and that the business could have its own credit score. But tonight, you're going to figure out exactly how that works. See, this credit is in the business's name and it's based on the business's ability to pay, not the business owners. So that means no matter what state you're credit in, it doesn't matter because your business is going to be able to develop a profile that's going to be strong enough to stand on its own. See, with an established credit profile and score, the business will then qualify for credit. I mean, how awesome is that? How awesome is being able to put yourself in a position where your business, based off its own strength, could be able to gain more credit to help, you know, expand and get you in a position to take advantage of more opportunities. That's what all of us want. That's in business to be able to take advantage and leverage opportunities that are right in front of us without having to put us in a tight spot. See, the business qualifies for revolving store credit cards like Staples, Lowe's, Sam's Club, Costco, BP, Walmart, even MasterCard, Visa, American Express, and even auto financing. Imagine being able to go out here and get cars financed under your business name. People are doing it each and every day. See, at this point, the business can also qualify for credit lines and loans all by using the business credit. OK, business credit is the only financial solution you can get regardless of your cash flow, regardless of your collateral or consumer credit quality. It doesn't matter about that. It doesn't matter about your credit score. It doesn't matter about some of these other things, but business credit, you can start building that even without any of the things that I just mentioned. This means any business can obtain it. Let me say that again. Any, A-N-Y, okay? Underline that circle, put a star beside it. So that means no matter where you are as a small business owner, no matter where you are as an entrepreneur, you can actually obtain business funding even nonprofits. There was somebody who messaged me earlier today and they were wondering, was it going to be beneficial for them to be able to jump on this webinar because they have a nonprofit organization? Absolutely. If your nonprofit needs money. Okay. You definitely want to position yourself to build your business credit profile, even startups. You may be thinking Rico, well, I just, you know, got my LLC. I just got, you know, received my e EIN paperwork. Uh, you know, can I start establishing a business credit profile? It will be in your best interest to start it right away. I even tell people, even before you get your LLC, okay, even before you figure out what your business name is, you need to put yourself in a position to start establishing business credit, you know, some type of platform or software or coaching to be able to start establishing your business credit profile as soon as you get those other things taken care of. And a really good system I actually help you even establish those things as well. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit more. So what makes business credit so awesome? You know, y'all got to understand that, you know, most businesses don't succeed because of their lack of access of resources, you know, uh, mainly money. OK, if you don't uh, have the, the resources, the financial resources uh, to be able, you know, to move through some of the tough times or to get started properly, uh, you won't be able to make it in the world of business. I always tell people the world of business is the world of the lions, tigers and bears. Ooh, we <laughs> right. You know, it's not like getting the job. Sometimes we can be protected when we have a bad mindset or sometimes when we're not in the right place or, you know, we're not necessarily creative. If you're working for somebody else, uh, you'll still get paid if you just go to work and you're able to perform certain processes. You know, your possibilities of success uh, totally financially or freedom may not be there, but you know you'll still get a paycheck. Now, the, now the whole thing that the whole risk that entrepreneurs and small business owners take is the ability to be able to do something that may be unpredictable in terms of income, but maybe it's something they love. 
you'd be able to do something unpredictable in terms of income, but the ceiling is really not there in terms of the amount of income you can make, depending on what type of business you're in. If you could scale it, you can get rich beyond your wildest dreams. But the bottom line is most people don't have that type of opportunity, even though they're entrepreneurs, because they don't develop business credit. See, business credit doubles your borrowing ability. It doubles it. OK, so that's one of the things I want you to write down if you're taking notes, because that's something to keep in mind as you move along, because if you multiply your borrowing ability by two, guess what also multiplies by two? That's right. Your potential, the opportunity that you have in front of you. Also, business credit makes your business more lendable. And that's something that we're going to go into as well. But I want you to be able to at least jot those two down. It doubles your borrowing ability and it makes your business more lendable so let's talk about some of the benefits of business credit okay you can be issued a failing score that's a credit score for your business even if you have no credit reporting because you look unestablished or possibly on the verge of filing bankruptcy now if you're joining me over the webinar you're looking at some slides and you can actually see what i'm talking about as well as you're listening but you're looking at a credit report that's pulled from a company that has no business credit OK, nothing has been reporting. But check this out. Their their IntelliScore is a 28. They're at medium risk. But check this out. Their financial stability risk is medium to high risk. OK, now this is on a score range of one to 100. One meaning that's just terrible. OK, you're not going to get anything, obviously, in 100, meaning perfect business credit. And their score is a 28 and a six. And they don't even have anything reporting. When a company or a bank or a credit or anybody's looking you up and they see 28 and 6 for these scores, you know, it looks like that you're unestablished. It looks like that you're on the verge of filing bankruptcy. And the truth may be, you may be making money. But if you don't have a business credit profile, that's what's showing up. Okay. Even one account reporting, just one, which you can get immediately after this presentation tonight. Okay. You can go from no score or a failing score to a great score. And we're talking about just one account that's reporting. And what happens at this point is you become more lendable. The whole idea here, uh, as you grow your business and you want to become business legit, okay, you, you want to be able to get to a point where you have access to whatever you need to grow your business, okay, you want to be able to become lendable. And when you start building your business credit profile, that makes you become lendable. You're looking at a, a copy right here of somebody's a screenshots of their credit report, their business credit report. They only have one item reported. That's a net 30 account. We're going to talk about net 30 accounts a little bit later. Uh, you know, but their score went up to a 96 low risk and a 55 low to medium risk when it comes to their Intel score and also their financial stability risk. OK, that was only after they had one item reporting. The problem is most people don't know how to get one item reporting. And that can keep you in a very, very bad space. As you continue to grow your credit, the business reporting agencies recommend you for more and more money. And that's what you like to have when you're in business, especially if you got great ideas, you know, especially if you can invest and flip one dollar into three. That puts you in a situation where you can win in a major way, you know, helping you get higher approvals on business credit cards, loans and lines of credit. So that's something to really, really be excited about. And I see somebody, I think, trying to ask me a question. So the great thing is if we have some time by the end of this webinar, I'll be answering questions. So you might want to write those down, or type those in that little box, and I'll address those at the end. Uh, you know, But you're going to be able to get in position as you build your business credit to get higher approvals on different types of funding. Okay, Remember, this has nothing to do with your personal credit. You know, uh, I was just at a, a franchise show this weekend. Myself, uh, my partners, Dr. Carlton Calhoun, Hazik Ali, um, and also uh, some of our staff. And uh, and we were promoting the franchise program that we have with our company. We offer people uh, a white label uh, franchising opportunity uh, with our company. They want to be in the consumer credit industry, the business credit industry. And it was so many people that even if they didn't want to be involved with 
our franchise opportunity, they still were talking to us because they needed funding. Okay, they were in business or they were trying to get in business and they wanted to figure out how to build a business credit profile. And the main reason is because most of them didn't even know they could build a business credit profile. In fact, what we're doing right here is the only way you can legally have two credit profiles. Okay. You know, there's some people out there selling things called CPNs and selling these other types of numbers and saying, hey, you know, you can get around using your own personal social security number for credit. Uh, but there are literally people who go into jail, okay, buying CPNs. So I wouldn't recommend it. You know, there, there are people who certainly try it. Some people get away with it, but I would want to stay away from that if I were you, okay? Well, how do you build another credit profile from scratch and be able to start getting the money you need? We're talking about even up to millions of dollars as you develop that profile. That's your business credit profile, okay? And you can build multiple business credit profiles if you have multiple businesses with multiple EINs. So that's something to really be excited about. Well, how can you win with business credit? Let's talk about that a little bit because you can get your business credit profile and your business credit score established fast. Well, how fast? Well, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but check this out. It could really, really happen. And I know that because I'm speaking from personal experience and also uh, some of the success that we're seeing some of our clients gain. Business credit scores are only based on one factor opposed to personal credit scores. Well, what are they based on? You know, personal credit scores are, are based on multiple factors, five factors uh, as a matter of fact. OK, business credit scores only based on one factor, and that's when the payments are made. OK, if your payment is made on time, OK, that's what your business credit score is based off of. If your payment is made early, then that's going to be even better. Personal credit scores are based on these five factors. Payment history, utilization. OK, payment history is how have you paid your bills over the course of time? Do you have late payments? Utilization is an amount of credit that you're actually utilizing. OK, uh, from the, the limits that they give you, if you have ten thousand dollars in, uh, you know, revolving credit lines on your personal credit, meaning all your credit cards added up, the limit is ten thousand dollars. And if your balance is nine thousand dollars, that means your utilization is 90 percent. That means your credit is probably not that good right now. So you want to be able to keep your utilization below 30 percent. Any of you who kind of, you know, uh, danced around the 30 percent mark up to 40 percent or 50 percent, then back down to 20 percent. If you monitor your credit, you probably see how it goes up and goes down based on your utilization. OK, so utilization is 30 percent of your credit score. While payment history is 35 percent, then length of your credit history is another 15 percent. You know, some people talk about, well, they don't do credit. You know, you don't want to put yourself in that kind of position because the longer you go without developing credit the longer it's going to take for you to develop a great credit score and if you want to be an entrepreneur if you want to get to a point of being able to leverage the systems in our country to eventually potentially gain freedom or be in business for yourself you want to start making sure you develop some type of credit so credit history is very important also the accumulation of new credit you know, if you go out here, uh, you know, and not only applying for certain credit, but as you gain new credit, whether they're loans or whether they're credit cards or even inquiries, okay, all those things count when we talk about new credit. That's 10% of your score. And then your credit mix, you know, do you have installment loans like a, a car note uh, on your credit, you know, or a mortgage? You know, do you have revolving credit like credit cards? You know, all those types of things, credit mix that, you know, they look at uh, what type of credit you have. And that's 10 percent of your credit score. So if you think about it, there's five factors that make up what your personal credit score is. And if you got one or two of those that are off, then your credit score may be pretty jacked up. The thing you got to love about business credit is all you got to remember is to pay your bills on time. And then that score is going to continue to go up. See. With business credit, we have something called a paydex score. 
See, with personal credit, you have something called a FICO score. Now, that's something that you need to write down because you can sound really smart when you're talking to people. You know, when you start explaining how this whole business credit process works. See, because with personal credit, you have a FICO score. And, you know, that's how banks, uh, you know, and lenders determine uh, how much credit to extend you, uh, you know, because of your FICO score. And that goes up to 850. And then with business credit, you have a pay deck score. So that's how these lenders uh, are going to decide how much and the banks are going to decide how much credit they want to extend you based on your pay deck score. Well, let me give you a little information on how to achieve uh, a great pay deck score. Well, you want to pay all your bills early. So I'm going to show you how to develop business credit tonight. And I'm going to show you, uh, you know, after you establish these accounts, it's very important that after you receive a statement, after you receive your invoice, you go ahead and pay that bad boy right away. OK, why? Because if you show uh, a healthy history of paying your bills early when it comes to your business credit, well, that'll get you close to the maximum score, which is a 100. See, a great score is an 80. If you're at 80, then that means you're pretty much, uh, you know, uh, very low to no risk. OK, 80 or above is a great score because that means your payment is showing that it's consistently prompt. OK, um, a 70. That means your payments typically come 14 days uh, after the due date, 60, 21 days after the due date. If you got a 50, you're averaging 30 days after the due date or 40, 60 days beyond the due date, 30. If you got a 30, that's 90 days beyond the due date, 20. Don't worry about it. Nobody's giving you anything. OK, because you're averaging 120 days beyond the due date. That's three months. Let me tell you something. If you're going to get in the business and you have uh, bad habits or you had bad habits when it came to paying your bills or you had bad habits when it came to, you know, meeting the terms on different loans or revolving credit you had, you need to be able to make sure you start monitoring that and start fixing those habits. So when you get in the business, you don't deal with the same challenges. And the great thing about business credit is that you figure out how to deal with those challenges on a personal side, and maybe you have a credit repair or credit restoration company working through getting those things off and, and getting and getting you educated on what to do in the future. Uh, you can start building your business credit from scratch, and you can not have to worry about all of those mistakes you made while those are getting cleaned up. Okay, so it's important for you to understand that you got to pay on time. Once you build business credit, what does that mean? That means you have no PG. OK, now, if any of you been in business for a while, if any of you just started in business and you try to get a business credit card, you heard about PG. OK, it's not parental guidance. OK, PG means uh, personal guarantee. OK, you don't have to do a personal guarantee on some account types and then eventually all account types when you have a business credit score. We're going to talk more about that shortly as well. See, your initial limits range from smaller to very large in the beginning. All right. Uh, when you start developing your business credit, and I'll talk about my journey here in a little bit, because prior to uh, us beginning to offer uh, the business credit repair and the business credit builder. OK. And what we call our business credit finance suite. I wasn't totally educated on how business credit worked. Uh, in fact, you know, after I started asking more and more questions to my mentors and also one of our partners uh, who's earned, uh, you know, tens of millions of dollars in this industry. He explained to me, you know, what I needed to do to make sure that our company had our business credit set up properly. Even though we had earned millions of dollars as a company, our business credit profile still wasn't set up properly. And after I got that thing set up properly, you know, I went from just getting a few accounts to where I maybe had $500 or $1,000 in credit extended uh, to Nova LLC up to $5,000 to $15,000 up to $25,000. Uh, and now I have a, a card that's revolving uh, that has no limit whatsoever. OK, we, we can actually go out and buy buildings and cars on it if we wanted to. Uh, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. But the bottom line, it, it ranges, but it is a process. There are steps that you have to take to be able to succeed um, as an entrepreneur, obviously. And there's steps that you have to take to succeed in building your business credit. OK, now business credit is perfect for startups. Now, we're not just talking about, you know, because obviously if you want to be able to get loans, 100 grand, 250 grand, a million, five million dollars, you know, there are going to be steps that you have to take. There are going to be requirements, uh, you know, that you have to abide by in order to get those higher uh, caliber 
type loans and funding, okay? But if you're out here and you need 10000 25000 50000 even up to 100000 and even 150000 uh, there's opportunities where you can get that money, okay, as a startup when you start developing business credit. So that's super exciting. The thing about business credit is there's no cash flow requirements. Again, that's why startups can start developing business credit because you may not have a lot of cash flow in the beginning. Right. But if you follow the system of what I'm about to show you, you don't have to develop cash flow because you'll be able to develop business credit anyway. Now, the reason why you want to develop business credit is the bottom line is it gives you a competitive advantage. If you look at companies that you may be competing with and if all of you are kind of doing the same things, maybe some of you doing a few different things in your industry, whatever your competition is. More than likely, at the end of the day, the person who has the best financial resources available to them are going to be the person who wins. You want to put yourself out front by having access to the credit and being able to leverage any opportunity when it comes so you can stay ahead of the competition. Next, there are no collateral requirements. So, you know, when you develop business credit, you don't have to put up your house, you know, mortgage your house or anything like that. Uh, to be able to put yourself in a position uh, to gain access to more resources. You don't have to go out here and, and put the equipment that you've already paid for up as collateral when you have business credit. And the thing about it, when you get business credit, it's easier to grow your business. You know, you, you don't have to be so meticulous uh, in the decisions you make about purchases. Now, obviously, you always want to take calculated risk, but there's some things that you just need to grow your business. Like if you don't have business credit right now and you're listening to me, uh, if you're watching me right now, there's probably something that you know if you had an extra $5,000, if you had an extra $10,000, you probably know exactly what you will be getting for your business. You probably know exactly how your business could grow. You don't need to go on Shark Tank. Guess what? You just need business credit and that's why you're here tonight. So check it out. Every highly successful business in America has business credit, okay? Every highly successful business. And I'm just gonna give you a few examples to kind of show you where we're going with this and what's going on. You know, pilot travel centers, you know, huge gas station, you know, uh, truck stop all across the country, 153 trade lines reporting to Experian. Publix supermarkets, okay? Another huge uh, supermarket uh, chain, uh, I know definitely in the Southeast, I don't know if it's around the whole country, but 171 trade lines. Okay, Dell Incorporated. Okay, Dell uh, actually, you know, uh, makes computers, right? Uh, 83 trade lines. Uh, Microsoft Corporation, Bill Gates, obviously the richest man in the world several times over the course of the past few decades. Uh, 131 trade lines. Now we're talking about a multi, 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 multi billion dollar company. You may say, well, what do they need? What do they need trade lines? What do they need credit reporting to the bureaus for? Uh, that's how they do business. So if these companies are going out here and they're getting trade lines and they're worth so much, then what should you be doing? Success leaves clues. Facebook, obviously the vast majority of us uh, every single person on the planet, okay, <laughs> if they have a cell phone or, you know, if they have friends, like if they're not living on a rock, they know what Facebook is, even if they're not an active participant in Facebook. Another multi, multi, multi billion dollar company, 40 trade lines. Apple, okay, close to a trillion dollar market cap, 138 trade lines. But check this out. All of us know about Walmart, right? Even if you don't order off of Walmart.com, uh, you definitely have been to a Walmart and you probably made purchase from Walmart. And there's Walmarts in, you know, many of them in every major city across this country and now starting to be across the world. But check this out. They have 513 trade lines. We're talking about 80 percent of their cash injection comes from business credit. So that means that 80 percent of what they purchase for their business because obviously Walmart doesn't make all the items that's in Walmart. They obviously buy them from other businesses uh, for a lower amount and then they sell them for a higher amount. Okay, that's how Walmart makes money, right? Most businesses, they make money that way. 
But 80% of what they buy in Walmart is on credit. They don't spend any of their cash. They buy it on credit. Then they sell it. Then they pay the credit off. And then they made a profit. So they don't use their money. They leverage somebody else's money to be able to make their money. And they make more money. You know, that's why Walmart is obviously one of the most successful companies in the whole world in the history of business. So that should, again, leave a clue for you. Even new business can start developing business credit as well. So that's something, and we're having trade lines report as well. So that's something that you should be very excited about. Well, how do you build business credit? I know you're saying, Rico, well, you're going through all of this. What do I need to do to start building business credit? Well, the first thing you got to do is make sure your business is set up credibly. Okay. This is what we call business credibility. Okay. And we're going to go through some of those steps here tonight. And, and it's important for you to be able to set up, set yourself up with someone. If you can't do it yourself, to be able to get this done. And if you do it right the first time, you won't have to worry about going back and doing it over again. I met so many people over the course of this weekend um, that tried to do some of this stuff themselves. And now they had to pay one or two different people to try it again for them. And then the first or second person really didn't do it right and they had to go now they're, they're coming to us and they're saying, wow, well, your company, you're already doing this. You got software set up. You got a business advisor team in place. Now, can you help me? If they would have started with us in the first place, they wouldn't have been out so much money. I'm not saying we're perfect, but what I can tell you is that the system that we have is proven. And uh, so many people are being able to take advantage of it and come out on the other side better than they were when they got started. But you got to make sure your business is set up credibly. There are several things that you have to do. Let's talk about those things. Number one is you have to have a business entity. Okay. See, several people out here operating as sole proprietors. And what does that mean? You don't have an EIN. Okay. Um, you haven't registered with the Secretary of State uh, as an LLC or, or in, incorporated. You know, you're out here operating, uh, you know, a business name that's not really attached to anything. You just made it up. Okay. You can't just call yourself ABC Company and think you're developing a business identity that's legit, even though that's a name that hasn't been registered anywhere, right? So you want to be able to uh, develop an entity by going to your Secretary of State's website and registering your business, okay? Um, an LLC, Incorporated, I mean, something like that, right? Uh, you, and you could do that on your Secretary of State website. So you want to go ahead and, and get your entity registered. Then next, you want to get a business address, okay? Now, your business address is not your home address. That's why they call it a business address, okay? Now, you can have your home address as a business address, but the bottom line is, as you build your business credit profile, um, that's not going to show up uh, and really give you the credibility you need uh, to be able to establish a credit profile that's separate from your personal profile because your home address shows up on your personal credit file. So when you uh, gain a business address, and don't get me wrong, you don't have to go out here and, and uh, rent out a building uh, or a suite somewhere, but they have several addresses uh, that you can get to show up like a business address. It's like a virtual uh, me, uh, a virtual business address, okay? Like Da Vinci, uh, that's one, Regis, uh, you know, that that's another one that offer virtual addresses. Um, they give you a suite that's attached to a physical building that they have. Uh, and that, that suite really doesn't exist where you can go in and sit down in it, right? Uh, but the bottom line is it, it can be registered as a business address. So you want to make sure you establish a business address. Next thing you want to do is get a phone number, a business phone number, not your cell phone number, but a business phone number. Because when you start registering in certain uh, you know, directories, and we're going to talk about that here shortly, it'll pick up if it's a cell phone number, if it's a Google voice number versus a legit business phone number. So you need to get a legit business phone number. Then you need to have an email address and a website, okay? Uh, if your business is ABC Company, you know, you don't want uh, an email address, uh, ABC Company. 2015-19-25 at gmail.com. That's not very professional, okay? You want to make sure that uh, you, uh, you know, don't raise any flags. But if you do as a new business, you want to raise the least amount of flags as possible. 
So you want to be able to get you a website, let's say abccompany.com, okay? And your email address should be info at abccompany.com, support at abccompany.com, admin at abccompany.com, John, if your name is John, at abccompany.com. Now, I know a lot of y'all might be saying, Rico, well, that's common sense. Let me tell you something. Common sense ain't so common. And if you never heard, if you never had anybody educate you on how to build a successful business, then people need to hear these things. Even if you can't go in and build a website, you uh, you know, pay somebody to build a website. There are several sites out there uh, that offer very simple website building tools that may be free up to maybe ten or twenty dollars per month uh, for you to have in place. So you want to make sure you go ahead and get you a professional email address, a professional website. And again, that's getting you closer to establishing the business credit that you need. Also, certain licensing. OK, you got to look at what industry you're in. And when you're registering uh, your business, it'll ask you about certain code. It'll show you certain codes and it'll talk about what you need to operate certain types of businesses. But make sure you get all your documentation and your licensing out the way. OK, so uh, when you start applying for funding based on your industry, you'll have all the things that you need so they can see that you're totally legit. You know, some industries, you don't need a particular type of license. All you got to do uh, is just have a business license if you uh, are set up somewhere uh, in a storefront or you have a business or obviously, you know, you got to be registered with your secretary of state. But other than that, make sure you do research and figure out what licenses you need to operate your business. The next thing is your business listing congruency, okay? Your business listing congruency is very important over all platforms that you're reporting to and also is very important with what we call the 411 National Directory. I want you to write that down. I explained this to several individuals uh, over the course of this weekend and 100% of them did not know that they had to be registered with the 411 National Directory, okay? Now that's ignorance, but let me tell you, I was ignorant because I didn't know either <laughs> before I was educated on it. You know, I went to the site and we were not even registered on the 411 Directory. Don't go register on the 411 Directory until you have your phone number, until you have your email address and your website, until you have the business address. Once you have all those things in place, the LLC and the information with your EIN, all those things match across the board. That's when you want to register with the 411 National Directory and with that business uh, that business listing congruency, that puts you in a position of power. Because what happens is a lot of the online applications when it comes to business loans and business lines of credit or revolving credit or anything like that, even some of these net accounts, when you enter your information, it's going to scrub your information against the 411 National Directory. And if you don't, if you're not registered in that national directory, then you're not seen as lendable and it's going to kick you back as denied. Now, that's when you're trying to get everything in your under your EIN. That's when you're trying to get everything separate from your social security number. So it's important that you have your business address, your business name your business phone number, ownership information, even your website and email, all that information as the same on all the platforms going across the board. When you apply for something, make sure you apply for whatever application you're on with the information that's congruent across all these platforms. Y'all got to understand, I'm giving you some free game here, okay? And for those of you who don't understand what game is, that's information that's putting you in the best position to leverage the situation to get the result that you're looking for. <laughs> OK, so you got to understand that this is this is some information that you're not just going to learn anywhere. I'm giving it to you for free. Now, we can help you get through this whole thing. But if you want to go do it yourself, I'm giving it to you so you can go do it yourself. You know, it may take you uh, a lot more time. But hey, you know, if that's the route you want to take. The next thing is you need your EIN. I talked about that earlier. That's your employer identification number. You get an EIN by going to irs.gov. And there's, you know, something you could click on. It's probably say apply for EIN somewhere. But this is where you get that number. That's the same digits as your social security number, except it's the number for your business. And it separates 
you and your business. Uh, what commences that whole separation, uh, you know, is your articles of organization that you get when you register for the Secretary of State. OK, and you become that LLC or you're incorporated, you know, you become a corporation and you separate yourself. That's very, very important, uh, especially if you're operating a business that could present some liabilities and you don't want to get sued. Somebody can sue your company, but they can't sue you in that respect uh, if that liability happens within your company. OK, well, they can sue you. But the bottom line is you can protect yourself better if you're a separate entity. And if you're building business credit. You got to become a separate entity. So you're doing everything the right way right now. The next thing you want to do is get a business bank account. OK, you want to open that up. Uh, why is that important? Because you're in business. OK, uh, hopefully you want to make money. OK, and you want that money going into a bank account. It's very important that you have a bank account established uh, and they start showing some history, because when you uh, start applying for merchant accounts and things of that nature, uh, you have to have a bank account in place because they're going to ask you for bank statements and things of that nature. So go ahead and get that established early, even before you start making money. OK, the next thing you want to do, step number two, after we go ahead and build our business credibility. OK, we're going to get set up with business credit reporting agencies. That's what CRA is, business credit reporting agencies and get your reports. All right, we're going to see if you have anything on them. See, some of you right now have business credit scores and you don't even know it. OK. And the bottom line is, if you have one, it's probably very low. OK. <laughs> if you have not been following these steps, your business credit score is probably low. But you want to go ahead and get these reports. This is step number two. Step number one, we went through the 10 things that you must do, the mandatory things to be able uh, to build your business credibility. OK. Now, step number two is getting your business credit reports, uh, you know, so we can see what they look like. OK, you can run a search with each credit reporting agency to see if you're set up now. All right. You can go to their sites, you know, Equifax, uh, Experian, Dunn and Bradstreet. Those are the major credit reporting agencies. OK, for business. All right. You know, not the regular Experian dot com, because obviously that's a credit reporting agency for consumer credit. You want to go to the business site, not Equifax dot com, because they are also obviously one of the main three consumer credit agencies. You want to go to the business site and then Dun and Bradstreet, of course, uh, you know, is a business credit reporting agency. Uh, each report can contain up to five different credit scores. Now, don't make, don't let that intimidate you. Don't get upset about it because the bottom line is, you know, they have little scales and they'll tell you what's bad and also what's good. And then, you know, hopefully you fall somewhere in between and we try to work your way up to excellent. OK, step number three is you want to get approved for vendor credit. All right. So make sure you write down these steps. OK, don't just be on here listening to me and you're not where you want to be in business. You want to make sure you're taking some notes so you can succeed. Because I'm telling you, man, the people who really succeed and change their lives are the people that start doing something they really didn't do before. You know, the people to make a decision that they're going to start writing things down and they're going to start creating a game plan to win. OK, and that's what we're talking about here tonight. There's no reason why I would be on this webinar with you right here tonight if I was if I wasn't intentional about helping you all win. If I wasn't intentional about winning myself, that's the thing about our company is we believe that we're blessed to be blessings to other people. But what we also believe is that when you help other people win and it helps you win, you can sleep better at night, right? You know, there's fulfillment attached to that. So make sure you're not just taking this information for granted, uh, but you're taking notes so you can really get uh, what you want to receive in this life. Okay. Step number three, get approved for vendor credit. There are certain tiers that you have to go through in order for you to be able to get to a point of getting what we call cash credit, you know, being able to get an American Express card, uh, you know, or bank loans or credit lines. You got to start somewhere. It's a process. The reason why most people fail, they go ahead, go through all their business credibility and they think, man, I'm going to set up on a 411 listing, a national listing now. I'm going to go ahead and go out here and, and uh, get me an Amex, okay, a, a Platinum. You know, I'm going to go ahead and apply for this MasterCard or Visa or whatever the case may be, or I'm going to apply for this loan under my business name. 
And then they get discouraged after denial, after denial, after denial, after denial, because there's steps to this thing. OK, like Meek Mill said, there's, there's levels. OK, <laughs> Meek Mills is a rapper, by the way. So get approved for vendor credit. Well, what is vendor credit? OK, vendors, OK, businesses offer net terms. You probably heard net 10, net 15, net 30. OK. Uh, what this means is that's how many days you have to fulfill that invoice after you make the purchase. Okay, after you make that purchase and they shoot out that invoice, most of the time it's via email and also they'll send it through the mail. They'll tell you got X amount of days to pay the invoice. That's what the net means. Okay, net means you know the days after the invoice is actually generated. Ninety-seven percent of trade vendors do not report to the business reporting agencies okay so make sure you, you heard what i said with that okay because i gave you step number two which was get approved of vendor credit but it doesn't matter if you're getting approved for vendor credit if the vendors are not reporting to the credit reporting agencies okay that's what we call hustling backwards that's another metaphor okay that means you're going nowhere fast you're not accomplishing your goals in the amount of time that you sought out to accomplish your goals. That's what hustling backwards means, okay? <laughs> so you want to make sure that you stay on track to succeed by being able to find vendors who do report to the credit reporting agencies and who will approve you even though you have no established credit, okay? So make sure you listen to that because you go out here and you try to do this thing yourself. You'll get frustrated and you'll start saying, man, this doesn't work. That guy told me that this would work, but it doesn't work. No, it worked, but you just didn't work it the right way because there's several people that try to do this. And what they do, they end up getting frustrated and they quit uh, trying to get credit under their EIN and they just go to the PG, which is personal guarantee. Maybe we should have a quiz after this to see if all y'all remembering this stuff that I'm talking about. But check this out. You got to have five of these accounts reporting before you can get to the revolving store credit. Now, remember what I said, you got the tiers and in order for you to get to the top, the pinnacle, in order for you to go out here and just get business credit that's not attached to your personal social security number, you got to successfully get through all the tiers and you got to have a certain amount of accounts in each tier. OK, so we said you got to go ahead and get at least five of these accounts reporting before you can get to the revolving store credit. All right. So next is you want to uh, step number three is you must start a business credit profile and score with starter vendors. OK, starter vendors are ones who will give you initial credit, even if you have no credit, no credit score no trade lines. Most stores like Staples will not give you initial starter credit. So don't even try to apply. Okay. That's another note. Don't do Staples in the beginning. Okay. Cause you will get denied. Okay. So the vendor credit are vendors like Quill. They offer office supplies. So if you have an office and I'm not just talking about a building or a suite somewhere, but also a home office. If you own a business, that's what you want to work towards, having an office. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be a room. For example, my first office was a kitchen table. I didn't even have a laptop, okay? I had an old, a old uh, telephone uh, that I got from my grandmother. And in fact, the kitchen table that I had was an old kitchen table that I got from granny, okay? Uh, you know, and I just had, you know, some paper and, you know, a little inbox. So I was a proud of my little uh, kitchen table. That was my space for my office. That's where I started. And I started buying a few office supplies. I had some tape. I had a stapler. OK. Uh, eventually, I was able to get a laptop. OK. Uh, you know, and I had a little holster for my pencils and pens. See, never despise small beginnings. I don't care if you start working in your living room. You got to be able to see your executive office from wherever you start. Now I have a whole office. I employ people and I have uh, cubicles uh, for my employees. I have offices 
for my executives. I have a conference room. I have a lobby and a reception area. I have flat screen TVs in my office. I got a studio area in my office. I got a kitchen with a kitchen table in my office. But guess what? I started at a kitchen table. Man, I hope y'all feeling what I'm saying right now. You got to get excited about the fact it doesn't matter where you start, baby. It matters how you finish. And I'm still going. So what does that mean for you? You got to get excited about the fact of knowing that you're hooking up with people who's going to help you get to where you need to be. Because most people never get to the destination because they're riding and running with the wrong people. Oh, my goodness. This is getting good. Let me get back on track. I digress. So Uline, okay, does shipping supplies. All right. So Quill does office supplies. So even if you're at your kitchen table, uh, you can get a Quill, a Quill account and order some paper, you know, order a stapler, order some staples, order some paper towels, okay? Uh, and that reports are done in Bradstreet. Get your invoice paid off. Uline, shipping supplies. That's where you want to get your tape from. You know, buy you a small pack of boxes or bags or something, okay? Granger, uh, you know, that, you know, so that there, there's several vendor accounts that you can get that report to these credit reporting agencies that's going to help you start establishing or your credit profile. I just gave you three that you can get right now, even if you decide to do business with us or not. Uh, but remember, you need five. OK, so step number three was to go ahead and get this vendor credit. But check this out. There are two alternatives to using vendor accounts. If you're a person that want to get on a fast track and you say, hey, man, you know, uh, shoot, I, I need some more vendor accounts. Uh, but the bottom line is, you know, I, I want to get on a fast track. You know, uh, first alternative is a Nove business credit finance suite. We're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, shortly, but that's one option. So write that down, put a star beside it. Uh, the second option is what we call UBF. Okay, UBF stands for Unsecured Business Financing. You know, we have relationships uh, with over 1,200 banks, uh, alternative lenders is what we call them, and you got got approvals up to 1,500. I mean, excuse me, 150 thousand dollars. Okay. And there's several different ways that we can get you that funding, depending on your situation. And a lot of this funding is anywhere uh, from, you know, zero percent financing for six to 18 months. So that's a beautiful thing. And also the thing I love about that, and I want you all to catch this because a lot of people don't catch this. If you're in business and you're doing business and you have credit cards where you got a personal guarantee, uh, and even though they're business credit cards, they're probably showing up on your personal credit report. It will be in your best interest to make sure you can get some business credit cards or business lines of credit that don't show up on your personal credit report, which 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 is where the UBFs, what we use, they don't show up on your personal credit report. So when you get these accounts and you have zero percent financing for six to 18 months, that means you can do a balance transfer. And you do those balance transfers from the business accounts or even the personal credit card accounts that you have and you transfer those over to these business credit cards where you're not paying any interest for six to 18 months, what also happens is your utilization on your personal credit cards go down to zero. That means that your credit score on the personal side shoots up, even though if the utilization on your business cards near 100%, it doesn't matter because all they look at is if you pay on time. Y'all can't tell me this ain't good information. Like if you hear this for the first time, you gotta understand this is like changing. It's like changing. See, because that little hack that I just gave you can send your personal credit score up 100, 150 points. That puts you in a position to leverage all other kind of money, not only on the personal side, but now since your personal credit goes up, that also allows you to leverage more business credit right away with the UBF because it is a PG. Initially, because you don't have business credit. So this works for startups. OK, no cash flow or collateral requirements. We're usually able to get people, uh, you know, pretty much uh, guarantee the funding and approve if you got a minimum of a 685 credit score. OK, 685 credit score. OK, now that's around a median, but we really would like the lowest credit score you have out of the three with TransUnion, Equifax or Experian to be 685 and your utilization to be on a 30 percent. You know, you can pretty much be guaranteed funding at that point unless there's something other, uh, you know, some extreme circumstances that we're not aware of. But even if you're not at that level and you got somebody that can guarantee 
uh, be like a cosign on the loans that that is in that situation. And guess what? You know, we can fast track this thing for you, baby. All right. All right. So uh, NovaFundingApp.com. We're going to make that available, uh, you know, for you individuals here tonight that want to be able uh, to apply uh, and see if you can fast track this thing. But those are the requirements. So if you're not at 685, don't even waste your time right now trying to get UBF because it's not going to happen. So if you're not minimum 685, uh, you know, don't even go to don't even go to the website. So let's keep it moving. Step number four. Now you got five trade lines reporting from the vendor credit. Now what we got to do, we got to get them to at least report to one credit reporting agency. Then what we got to start doing is get you applying for some revolving store credit. All right. So like I have, you know, Uline, you know, we have we order stuff for shipping uh, from Uline at our office. You know, we have Quail, we have Granger, you know, we have a few other vendor credits as well, you know, but. You also want to get to the point that you are developing your revolving store credit. You know, this is credit from places like uh, Amazon, Best Buy, Staples and Office Depot. I keep a few credit. I keep a few cards in my wallet. Uh, like you see this right here is a Office Depot uh, card. OK, store purchasing card. OK, got a little number on it. Nova LLC. Hopefully uh, you didn't see my number. You're going to go use it. But anyway, it's also asked for some other information so you can't. But you need five starter vendor accounts first before you start getting approved for the revolving store cards. Some of these companies have a time in business requirement. So it's important that you know that before you apply for the cards. All right. And the Nove uh, business credit finance suite, they actually tell you all of that. They tell you which ones uh, you actually need to have a certain time in business. This is another reason not to go from, uh, you know, the credit. Uh, to secure your five starter vendor accounts okay so make sure we get the five vendor accounts first all right so after you get those five vendor accounts then and and you get uh 10 revolving store credit accounts then you can apply for what we call fleet credit fleet credit is to buy repair and maintain vehicles these come from companies like chevron qt and BP. OK, so, for example, I'll cover my number on this one. So this is a quick trip fleet plus card. See my name down there. See Nova LLC. OK, so you want to be able to get you some fleet credit. All right. So after you establish your vendor accounts, you establish your revolving store accounts. Uh, then you want to start establishing your fleet accounts. OK, uh, that's tier three. Now, moving on to step number six, be responsible with fleet credit and you can move on to cash credit. This is a uh, Visa, MasterCard, Amex have, you know, we have all of those uh, cards, uh, you know, with our business credit. Uh, and if you have a $10,000 limit with a store, you can get the same credit limit in cash credit. All right. So you want to keep your social security numbers off these applications so they pull your business credit reports instead. OK, uh, if you have questions, once you get to that point, it's very important that if you see them requiring your social security number on the application, most times they'll have a little uh, small print that will actually say, uh, you know, hey, we're not going to pull your personal credit. This is. Uh, you know, for federal regulations to make sure we know who the owner of the business is for identity purposes. That's the only reason you will put in your social security number. If they don't have small print like that. You just want to call the risk department or whoever processes the applications. Most times they have that right there online and uh, let them know you want to apply uh, for that particular credit or for that particular loan uh, under your EIN and not your social security number. You just want to make sure of that so you won't get any additional inquiries on your personal credit and also so you can keep this separate uh therefore obviously again like i said you're going to use your ein to apply i was talking to you earlier about the card that we have that has no limit okay this is american express uh business platinum card okay it's very cool because it's like really heavy it's almost like you know steel uh you know but the bottom line is able to get this card and it has no limit on it 
you know, and it's under our business name uh, with no personal guarantee from myself. So that's something that, you know, uh, should be exciting for you to get to a point to get a car like that because it has no limit and it gives you the ability uh, to build your business successfully and have access to the funds that you need. So if a startup can show legitimacy, it helps the lender feel comfortable about lending. Building business credit is a specific process. And we went through that here this evening. It's a very, very specific process. Uh, and the bottom line is your startup is your dream. So it might begin on your kitchen table and then eventually turn into a multinational corporation. Uh, and we can help. You know, if I can go from uh, a kitchen table and a one bedroom apartment with hardly any furniture. I mean, when I got moved into that apartment, uh, I was sleeping on a futon. And the futon was also served as the, the living room uh, chair uh, for the sofa for everyone who came over. So you imagine that. I just had to make sure I got a double cover over it. Uh, you know, the people left uh, to actually sleep on, you know, but I went from that to living a, you know, a really decent lifestyle uh, at this point in my life uh, and being able to travel the world and things of that nature and uh, work exclusively for myself. Uh, my wife also works for the company as well. Uh, my son just went to college and he was working for our company uh, before he left to go to college. And now my daughter's nine years old. Uh, we're about to start training her. Uh, as a matter of fact, we already trained her on a few things to do in the office, you know, and we have other people uh, in our uh, business as well that, that are family and they're tied to it. And, and we believe, uh, you know, in running after uh, whatever our dream is. And we encourage you to do the same. And the bottom line is we can help. So let's talk about step number seven. And this is the last and final step. And this step is all about taking action. OK. And when I talk about taking action, that means uh, you probably got on this webinar for a reason here tonight. You know, and the, and the bottom line is uh, you thinking about that reason right now. And you saying, hey, you know, let's go ahead and move forward. But most people want to know, well, before I do anything, how long will this take? You know, that, that's a common question. You know, how long will this take? Well, if you decide to go ahead and get started with our process and get enrolled with us, you know, we're going to match you up one of our business advisors uh, within 24 to 48 hours of you getting started. So this is not a process uh, that you're going to have to go on alone. OK, we're going to match you up with somebody who's a professional, uh, somebody who's an expert and somebody who's going to listen to your desires and your goals. Uh, and put you on track to win in a major way, you know, and, and the thing is the value exchange is, uh, you know, they don't get paid unless you win. OK, we don't get paid unless you win. So that's something that should encourage you, uh, because if you lose, we lose. OK, if if you lose, they lose. If, if you lose, everybody loses. And you best believe we're on a winning team. Uh, next, net 30 or less accounts approved starting this week. You know, once you get started, we're going to start right away on tier one and get those knocked out. And you can go ahead and get those approved even tomorrow um, after you get started and you get into your portal. Uh, 60 days or less to get cash funding or unsecured lines of credit. We're talking about less than two months. And that's even, you know, if your business credit profile is not built yet, you know, because we even have ways where you can leverage your personal credit initially while your business credit is being built. To get you the funds that you need, uh, you know, to build your business. Even if your personal credit is not where you need it to be, we're going to help you with that as well. So that's something else exciting for you to think about. Uh, speaking of building your business credit profile, it can really be fully built out within three to six months. Okay, and we're talking about minimum. I mean, obviously, well, Rico, why can't it be less than three months? Because after we get these items added to your profile, they need to be reporting to the business credit bureaus. OK, or what we call the, you know, business credit reporting agencies. OK, so, you know, it's going to take 30 to 45 days, sometimes 60, depending on uh, when it's submitted. You know, so if you act in a timely manner uh, with the information that we give you, uh, it can be done pretty quickly, you know, and pretty quickly is within that three to six month time uh, window. Uh, and if you take longer, then the process will just take longer. Uh, but we're going to continue to work with you until you gain the success that you're looking for. So what's the true value of what we have? Because before I get into, you know, the, the, the amount uh, of investment that it's going to take uh, for you to be able to get this process started and get your business credit and get the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars in funding you're looking for, you know, what's the value of it? 
You know, uh, we offer debt elimination software and budgeting tool uh, that comes apart of this package. And the thing about it, you know, for a couple of hundred dollars, you'll see that the value of it is, is much more than that. Uh, but we'll just use that number. Uh, free access to experience smart business monitoring data. OK, so what we're doing now is adding up all the things that you're going to get uh, once you get started and you're going to see uh, how incredibly valuable our program and our software is to help you get to where you need to be because you're going to get access to this experience smart business monitoring so you'll be able to monitor your your business credit report with Experian. that's a six hundred dollar value also a free duns number okay and dun and brad street credit profile activation okay that's an annual fee of eight hundred dollars um, that's going to be taken care of once you get enrolled uh with our company in addition to that personal credit repair okay we don't like to call it credit repair necessarily because we're educating you on your credit and we're helping restore the scores that you deserve so we really call it credit education and restoration uh, but if your personal credit score is not where you necessarily want it to be uh, we're going to work on that for you for a year and that's a value of eight hundred dollars also direct access to lending sources in specific tiers that's something else that's really priceless you know, we just value this at a $1,200 price tag. You know, that's like a $100 a month. You know, but man, if you think about it, it would probably spend you several months trying to figure out what uh, lenders or, or, or what companies or vendors to uh, apply for in the certain tiers. You know, so it's really priceless. But we just put a $1,200 price tag on that. Personal business coaching and advisement. This is also something else that's priceless. You could be stuck on one section. Uh, for several months, you could just quit. You could just do nothing at all because you're so frustrated with the process and not knowing what to do. But we have a, a business advisor team that's going to be helping you that are experts. and It's going to be coaching you through the process. You can literally speak with them every day if you wanted to. OK, Monday through Friday. OK, within business hours. Um, but that's something to get excited about, you know, right there. And again, that could be priceless, but we value that at twenty four hundred dollars. Also, our business credit finance suite, everything that I went through here tonight uh, with those different steps, those are all lined uh, out for you in our business credit finance suite. It's an online portal uh, where you have access to each and every one of those steps. And it's going through uh, and showing you exactly what to do and how to do it. And what I mean by how, not only content with, that you're reading, but there are videos that actually say, hey, do this. After you do this, do this. You're able to check those out off, finish up all of your business credibility, and then start getting into the credit monitoring services, making sure you get registered for those. And those are turned on. You have access, getting your Dun and Bradstreet information set up, and then getting started with the tiers. Okay. Once you get started with tier one, we're not only showing you what vendors, but we're also showing you what exactly you need to qualify for those vendors. What vendors would approve you right away. You go ahead and get set up on those vendors and then the next tier opening up. In fact, we don't even allow you to apply in tier two, tier three, or tier four until you finish and complete tier one. So that's something else to get excited about. But you have vendors in all those tiers and even direct access to lenders, uh, you know, that's offering all kind of financing from equipment financing to hard money loans, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, people that want to go in and leverage their 401ks uh, equipment. I mean, there, there's just unlimited amounts of financing that you have access to. Also, business credit repair. That's another twenty five hundred dollar value. You know, some people have, uh, you know, a business credit score. They don't know it's messed up because maybe they made some mistakes in the past. They need somebody to repair that. All right. We're going to be doing that for you as well. If you add up the value of just all these items that I talked about, that's over eleven thousand dollars in value. But our system through Nova is only twenty four ninety five. No, not twenty four dollars and ninety five cents. Two thousand four hundred and ninety five dollars. Now, if you look at everything that I just talked about. And if you add up what you have to pay, if you kind of separated those things out here in the marketplace, you got to see how this is really a minimal amount to be able to get your business where you need to be to start succeeding. And, and that $11,000 amount that I placed the true value on this system is really minimal compared to what it really should be, especially when you start talking about getting business coaching and advisement uh, where you can reach out to people on an every 
day basis. So let's talk about how to take action tonight, okay? Because you got three options, and I'm going to go through each of those three options, and one of those options will even show up here for you. Option A is if, you know, you're saying that, hey, well, I can't move forward, uh, you know, with the financial investment, but I really need to get on track uh, to get where I need to be with my business. And let me tell you something. The thing that you got to do if you want to succeed is take can't out of your vocabulary. OK, you got to start doing that tonight. You know, let me tell you something. One of the things I learned early on in business and I even have to teach my kids this is when something comes up and you don't know how to do it. What you got to do is figure it out. Don't make an excuse about how you can't do it. Don't get depressed. Don't get mad. Don't sit around here and be angry at the world and everybody else because you feel like you stuck. No, what you got to do is figure it out, okay? So I don't want anybody to take option A, but this is an option for you, especially if you got more than a 685 credit score and you want to see if you can be able to go ahead, you know, uh, and get approved, okay? Uh, that's by going to novafundingapp.com uh, and be able to put in your information and we'll get with the finance officers and see, uh, you know, if we'll be able to get you approved for anything, with where you are right now, but you still need to build your business credit profile. That's the only way to be able to get your business to a point of being able to get the capital that you need, not attached to your social security number. Option B is our business credit finance suite and the credit profile builder. You know that we were talking about all those steps that we talked about earlier. Each and every one of them, you're going to be able to get completed through our business credit finance suite. OK, and you're going to be able to have access, uh, you know, to uh, the coaching and to the professional advisors that's going to be contacting you on a weekly basis. And you can even call them on a daily basis if you need to to figure out what you need to do to fast track this process. Typically, that's two thousand four hundred and ninety five dollars. That was the price of this system before this webinar. And that will be the price of this system after this webinar, okay? Uh, some of you, uh, well, all of you who are on this webinar tonight, even if you're on the phone lines, you won't be able to take advantage, uh, you know, of this if you're on the phone lines, uh, unless you go to the, well, actually, you're not on the webinar, so you won't, so you have to call into our office tomorrow. We're gonna give you 18 hours, 18 hours to be able to take advantage of a $500 off special, okay? $500 off, so instead of it being $24.95, because you took time out of your schedule to be on here tonight, uh, it's only going to be 500 off and I'm only going to do that for the first 10 people. Okay. For the first 10 people that get started because I also put out offer on social media that the first 10 people that were doing this, I was going to personally also be working with them to make sure uh, that they could gain uh, the success that they needed and answer any questions on the front end with what they had going on with their business. Okay. So you can go ahead and take advantage of that, you know, right away. All right. And so it's important for everybody to go ahead, you know, and get started uh, to be able to take advantage of that. OK, uh, next is uh, option C, and that's a payment plan. OK, so if you don't necessarily have the funds, uh, the, the 1995 to get started right away. OK, tonight there are two payment plan options. All right. The payment plan options are a three month payment plan where you can get started for $8.97 tonight and then two additional months of $8.97. That's $897, okay? Uh, so after your second payment, you will get access to the system, all right? You got to make at least two payments on a three-month payment plan to get access to the system, but at least you get the process started. You know, so I would recommend getting with the person who referred you uh, to this tonight so you can go ahead and get that information. Uh, the second payment plan is a six-month six payment plan. The six-month payment plan is $500 per month for six months, okay? You don't get access to the system until three months in, that's until you make three payments, and then you get access to the system. The great thing about the payment plans, though, is we start on your personal credit repair, or the credit education and restoration, uh, when you make your first payment, okay? We also give you access to the debt elimination software and the budgeting tool as well, just after your first two payments on the three month plan or your first three payments on the six month plan, uh, you won't get access into those points to the actual credit finance suite. OK, a business credit finance suite where you're able to start on your business credit profile. 
But I'm telling you right now, it only makes sense, really, to be honest with you, uh, to go ahead and take advantage of this offer that you see right here on the screen for $1,900, $1,995, because you got $500 off. And it says, you know, use the code when you're enrolling. But you got $500 off, uh, you know, and that's only two grand versus the three-month payment plan ad. So it will be about $2,700. And the six-month payment plan ad, so it will be about $3,000. But let me tell you something. You only can do what you can do. And I would recommend uh, that you do what it takes to get started uh, so you can make sure you get your business on track to win so you can win in your life. And the bottom line is we look forward in helping you reach your business goals. Each and every person uh, that's on this line tonight, whether you're on this conference call line or whether you're on the webinar line, you got dreams. OK, you got hopes, you got ambitions and, uh, and also you got a game plan. And, you know, no one uh, should tell you that your plan is not viable. No one should tell you that your plan is not going to work. Right. If you believe in it uh, and you have faith and you work hard and you surround yourself with knowledgeable people that can help you get to where you want to you want to be, you best believe you can win. There's no way I would be where I am right now. There's no way my partners wouldn't be where they are right now. And other people who are connected to us, they wouldn't be where they are right now if it weren't for people in their corner that taught them how to win and that wanted them to win. And if you're listening to me right now, we have some more information to share with you that we're going to help you. And, and I tell you right now, we want you to win. So with that being said, I would like to welcome you to Nove and your future that's waiting on you. God bless. Good night. Thanks for joining us. And again, you got 18 hours to take advantage of this offer. Uh, so hopefully you get started. And I look forward to speaking with you very soon. God bless and good night.